Hi everyone, this is Katina from I Am The One Ministries. Today is Friday, happy Friday. It's May 17th, 2024, and it is 1.38 p.m. CST. Um, please excuse the background noise, but this is where I am giving this word today outside in the beautiful um, Texas air. Um, the weather is awesome. Um, definitely too hot to sit in the car, but got a good enough breeze to sit out um, on the balcony and just um, give you the word of the Lord. I gave a word of the Lord yesterday. It's definitely indeed a noun word, and this is pretty much going to be um, a follow-up to that word, just to um, not only to reiterate what the Spirit of the Lord hallelujah is saying enforce it but to enforce it but to also give note to how serious we should take this word we are to take this word and to give us some some pointers as to um you know ensure that this word is going to be um rooted on some good ground and it's not going to be plucked up but we're going to use this word and apply it to our lives to where that, you know, um, we don't just take this word, hallelujah, as a good word, but we take this word as life and, and wanting to seek out having life more abundantly. So um, I prayed before and I will pray again um, so that we can all come into agreement with the Holy Spirit with respect to what he's saying to us in this hour and and in this time and what it is that we must do with respect to our part um i'm going to um yesterday i gave the word on um john 13. i'm going a little bit further um in john um and giving you the highlighted word what stood out to me what um, the Holy Spirit is saying with respect to where we are now. So as you see the thumbnail, let, let's set the record st straight. Let's set the record straight right now into knowing where we are. This is where we are. So let's th set the record straight right now. So um, I'm gonna go into prayer. Um, and and um, as always, thanking the Holy, Holy Spirit for um, just, um, gracing us with his presence. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for indwelling in me and filling in me. Um, I just pray that every word that comes from out of my mouth is pleasing before your sight and, and goes out and, and set forth to do all that uh, you will it to do. And um, let it um, be the life that come up off of my tongue and, and fill those who are diligently seeking you, diligently... Um, really wanting to enforce what you're saying in this time and um, so that we could be in alignment with where you are. Um, we know that you are looking for love and is not necessarily perfection, but love. And so um, I pray that as these words are life that are being spoken out of my mouth, that um, it goes out and, and reaches those and sparks life um, and life more abundantly in those who are truly diligently um, wanting to seek um, you and your love and so that we perform love it is love that your people need to see in the church body of Christ in, in this hour. And you cannot be proven until we look like love and embody love. And, and we are love. Um, Lord God, we have to understand. We have to receive you and receive your love as you have written for us and to walk in it. So that we are the very trajectory and we project um, who you are as love. If, if you can't be seen as we are being seen, then who will trust what we have to say? 
um, so that I, I pray that life goes out from these words and it sparks your people, it galvanizes your people to be the embodiment of love as you created us to be in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> amen and amen. Hallelujah. All right. So, John, um, back in John again. So, yesterday I gave the word with respect to John 13 and Jesus, Jesus washing his disciples' feet. He's serving the disciples. And um, he's given us the example always in a paradigm showing us first he does the things first to say that he's he's not <clears throat> to you know first of all Jesus he he brought himself down to practically nothing to indwell with man to be just like man to show you that hey you know although I am here out there I can come down here and be just like you I am just like you um, as a matter of fact you are more like me than anything and so um, and because you are me and I am you let me follow me let me show you what exactly it is that you need to do to have life and have it more abundantly just as you know I've created it and um, so Jesus always just again as I was explaining Lazarus death it wasn't no coincidence it was it was it was the precursor the prerequisite to show that this just like how Abraham was to sacrifice Isaac, it was an example to show that um, this is what's about to go down. This is what it's going to take. And I want y'all to understand that not me saying I want y'all to understand that, but just hypothetically saying that, you know, God saying, I want y'all to understand that this is not only what it's going to take, but this is what Genesis 1 and 3 means. This is, the, first of all, you're going to get back what was stolen from you. But I want y'all to understand what it truly means that jesus being he's i'm gonna say i but him jesus if he's if, if i was jesus and he's talking i the truth the way and the life when he says i am the resurrection i am the life he says i am the resurrection so basically just like how he told um was he speaking to martha at that time and she she said do you believe he said believest thou he said i am the resurrection so basically he's the resurrection and so the resurrection is the experience it's the process and it's not a time an event or anything like that it's, it's a process he said i am the resurrection and i am the life so not only he is the resurrection but he's also the life life he is everything he's all in all and so you he's telling Martha you don't have to wait to that day I'm 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 the here and now now the 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 beginning the end the end all the be all and you know like why why do we have to wait then I am you know this now but the thing is we didn't catch the fact that what was it what did it what that the Jesus dying and his resurrection and life thereafter we didn't know we didn't really catch what it meant for us how that was going to apply to us look at so we we didn't even see okay how it really applied to Lazarus we just like oh he was just brought back to life you know all it, it not only triggered an event but we didn't catch it to the point to where like hold up wait a minute okay he was brought back to life but we didn't catch the fact that 
it it definitely has a deeper meaning to mean much more than natural return of life but an eternal um an eternal Holy Spirit, um cara so cordoro conta para santa era de equende de de equi. Um, yo ma che che chiki min chuno kutuno no kutuno no cora para tana na se de. Ara se hi hi. I'm getting display an internal display of life, like description of life, understanding of life that it's it's on like you were spiritually deceased this event of resurrection brings you back for all eternity to have life because otherwise we without it we will be subject to eternal damnation so that example right there that paradigm right there it helps us to understand that we are way more than just mere pieces of what do you I, blob is the first thing that come to my mind flesh walking around here I'm thinking of I'm thinking of the way I believe the Lord sees it and why, you know, in some cases you you know, someone may describe it like this, zombies just walking around here and 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 not truly tethered to the Lord. Um because he is the source. Um I do have my um tablet plugged up here. But this isn't the end of of what I want to show you. Um, there is an outlet over there and my tablet definitely is plugged up you know God is the source he is the life source and um, he was showing me something earlier with respect to um, you know what it means to truly be tapped into him to be plugged into him and um, you know we, we had that choice to be plugged into him or not and that's that's the difference in in whether you have life and life more abundantly or whether you're truly just walking around here um as an empty vessel and and not one that um has the trueness of the lord and so um With that being said, um, Holy Spirit, I went into speaking about the paradigms because we are yet at another one Be because the Holy Spirit was showing me how Moses, when he raised up the serpent and in order for um, the Hebrews to believe um, they, you know, in order for them to be healed, they had to believe that in the serpent and, you know, the whole, the whole thing. And, you know, even with the son of man being raised and now, you know, with the Holy Spirit, we give me revelation on his remnant being raised. And now, you know, the church at large or the world at hand need to believe. But we're hitting that pivotal point in Mark that um, as best as we're doing all that we can, it shouldn't be in our own strength. And I believe that that's where m many of us are. Sometimes we fall into being in our own strength because of the lack of understanding. When we get that understanding, then is that word once we receive that word of understanding and knowledge what kind of soils it being like rooted in and um then there's just so many things that just come and really 
take us off and and that word is stolen and um at the end of the day is keeping us from embodying the true love of love of christ the true love of god and no one is going to believe what they see before them because even though the spirit of the living god dwells within us and he's working within us day in and day out um and he's showing me exactly where we are now um this is it's not easy it's, it's <laughs> many people like you see a football game or you know basketball game we could be spectators on the sideline and 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 say what somebody should have done um, unless you're walking in that person's shoes and each of us that are walking in this um this chosen life um Many of us, wow, the Lord is saying, living my life like it's chosen, living my life like it's chosen, chosen, chosen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know the, the, the song, living my life like it's golden. But he's, I, we, we, we must live our life like we are chosen. And um, that's where a good many of us fall short. This, the Spirit of the Lord is just so amazing um, because I was not really expecting that. Um, and that's literally going to be the, like the new theme song or the new theme like living my life like it's chosen we must live our life like we are chosen and um we just really have to come in acceptance of who jesus and what jesus written for our lives and who we are um that's how we love god we we love him by respecting this this script this this story you know what he wrote for us and stick to it's just like when you go to um work every day you, you you have an itinerary you have the things that you need to carry out let's just say you're a dentist thank you holy spirit you show me <coughs> a movie and um the dentist was asking how does his day look <laughs> and then when she showed them all them patients in the waiting room <laughs> it was that was funny um <laughs> um that goes to show you who we must defer to when it comes to um you know and especially understanding this is the day the lord has made if the lord has made our day we should be focused on you know what we should be doing which is what this talk truly is all about um john chapter 13 was definitely speaking on um you know um what jesus was showing them by way of an example um he gave those examples so that they could be definitely hardwired into their remembrance as far as what they see that's why he gave them visuals a lot he gave them the parables a lot so that they could see and um and prayerfully that they would implement these things and prayerfully that we would implement these things we don't we didn't have them visually but we have them by word but now that i'm seeing what this all means you know we 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 have to by the the word of the, the living um god take this what we what will what may be of it definitely first and foremost as life because once we follow this we won't have all the the patterns and cycles and chaos in our life um because god is a he, he's he's a god of law and order and that's why he says in this order love the lord thy god with all your heart mind he says love him first then love others as yourself there's an order to his law that even is a law it was the only, the first commandment. And that, that's all you have to do. Once you do that, you're fine. And so to show God that you love him, you obey his command. That's the first and foremost command you have to look at. Okay, God, you know, Lord, I love you. All right, because I love you, you know, I worship him. My focus is going to be always on him. Okay, what is on your heart today? What do I have to do today? You know, the main things, especially if you're walking in love, it's a given. Um, so
So as I was speaking on yesterday, you know, with respect to washing our brothers and sisters' feet, loving on one another, it's anybody from your family members, from whomever you encounter on a day-to-day -day basis. But most of us, we're, 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 you know, the enemy is on us so bad because, you know, as we look, you got to look at the things that's happening in this world and you got to look at how, you know, the next set of things is going to launch. And it's, and it's definitely based off of like where we are right now and, um, and where God is with us. And, and what are we doing to progress so that we can move forward? And what God sees well enough to say, okay, I am going to, uh, you know, you know, push you, go, go I'm going to push you through your breakthrough. Okay. You know, some of us, you know, <laughs> we're breaking through at terms. Some of us need to go through prematurely and some of us are beyond the term or in the midst of the term or just whatever the case may be wherever we are not your travail of childbirth or the deliverance of what god is birthing in, a, in us it's definitely you know we're at different paces in our growth and um so i want to again set the record straight to what we should be doing in this time and it's out with respect to love and I really want to give, like, like Jesus, give myself an, as an example, um, especially when when he he had to. I said this yesterday. Um, remind Peter. He said, "Peter, lovest thou me? You know, feed my sheep. Lovest thou me?" Um, here's one one of the examples. You know, I clearly saw Sister Camille Hedrick's um, video on what. The message with we're speaking to um when she said god said you know some of you are overweight i avoided that video and um i can't say i knew it was me i knew i was one of them and um it's nothing that I joke around with or anything like that. You procrastinate because you don't want to. You definitely don't want to look. I, I don't think it went as far as guilt or shame or anything like that. You just like, huh. but the more you procrastinate, you should be ashamed and you should be made guilty. Um... because you know the spirit of the lord is telling you okay this must need this you need to do this you know he's telling me to exercise he's telling me to do certain things or whatever now if you know me um i've already i don't have i have like a a thin frame already but I know what the spirit of the Lord means for me with respect to weight and things like that. Um, especially when you know what he needs for you to do and, and the type of condition that he needs your body to be in. And so um, this is one of those things to where, you know, you, you love the Lord thy God first. Work out. Get that get that regimen in plan. If, you know, um he says, you know, your first love, stick to your first love. If he is my first love, if he's telling me to work out and it's for, it's not just something that's for me, it's for the body of Christ at large. Because anything that I do is definitely meant, it's, just, it's like if you're on a plane, you got to put your mask on first before you can say, say save anybody else and so therefore you know we're definitely going to be assisting others with good health and things like that but i also needed to make sure i get this body condition because he's revealed things that are coming he's revealed things you know like that our bodies health wise need to be prepared for so that you know our immune systems will definitely fight these things off you know, he's definitely a healing God, but at what point, you know, will we be an obedient people? 
Hallelujah. And so um, we have to do our part. Um, and so I want to tell you this, how this impacts others. Because now, because I've delayed on that, other things get held up and delayed. Um, certain things I prayed for. If you're in enmity with God, sin, you know, anything could be sin in disobedience to his voice. Especially if he told me to work out. You would think it, be, it might be the harshest things. It is not the harshest things. Working out, like, that's a an awesome thing. But why did I procrastinate on it? Yeah, I didn't want to, like, it just, just wasn't, wasn't something I wanted to admit at that point and um just just putting it on hold in a sense and not realizing okay the longer you delay the longer things get held up and then others and so assignments get backed up people who are praying and that want looking for things that gets backed up so until i start that you know lessons or certain things are not going to be released because I've held it up because of you know just the smallest little thing like my lack of not wanting to admit something that was just just so simple and so I looked at it as like out of all this hard work that he's done and you know like look at where I am instead of like all right Lord you're right. Let me let me go ahead on. Let me implement a regimen, a plan, and this, that, and the other. You know, hence I have started, you know, I've worked out or whatever have you. Um, and the crazy thing was, is like, even before the Spirit of the Lord revealing this to me, it was something I had prayed for. Like, because as I was on these fasts, especially when you're on the three-day dry fast, you do, you get very thin and you know i was i was in my whining and um i ain't going to do like this because it was just straight up whining let me let me not even put it in parentheses it was just whining and um i was just i was just whining to the lord and i was just like how am i supposed to represent you looking like this i'm like lord i just look i look like i'm about to disappear like and you know um he needed me to a certain point like I, and I can admit things died they straight up died I mean because at that point I even wanted to die myself physically but you go on a spiritual detox like nothing else because at the end of the day our like someone someone said this like um it was something with the heart but we oh it's, it's a spiritual we're it was a spiritual what was that um I know like we are dead spiritually oh disease it's a spiritual disease thank you Holy, Holy Spirit heart disease spiritual disease heart disease because we we're not loving like the Lord that we should because God is going to judge us by our hearts, of course. He knows everybody. All the decisions are made by our heart. And so, yeah, we truly have spiritual heart heart disease. And and so, um, what was my train of thought? Um, you know, like, like, just with that being said, those things, they, they were definitely dying. They, there was just so many things falling off of me. And you 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 definitely become separate from your your flesh and it was time so where i didn't even want to be attached to this flesh or associated and i got into doing more wine and like why did we have to be like this why like and then i wanted to experience life as adam and eve did before the fall and you know i think i've gotten to myself into to where even speaking where paul was talking about like you know being of the flesh and you know i wish i wasn't of the flesh and if i could be you know not of the flesh you know i would you know it, just going through those motions and i'm pretty sure many are experiencing that if not talking about it but we 
are tethered to something that is needed to be on this earth and in this realm it's a beautiful thing but unfortunately it, it hinders us and we definitely have to get it under submission and within the Lord's control not even our control but under his submission because that is the only way that is the only way but we will once we adopt that true love that is that is the key right there once we beat that feat of heart disease spiritual heart disease then i believe we can have a life like paul and begin to live in love more abundantly um and once we we adopt that we'll know how to answer the lord and then also we'll know how to not be the one that's you know taking part in 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 pettiness especially when the enemy knows how to use our families a lot of us are going through so much in-house um warfare because even if like like uh, let's just say i don't go anywhere or do anything okay i'm away from anything that could possibly get to me you still have things that this is why the lord says to stay in the word what 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 trouble could you possibly get into <laughs> when you stay in the word and and prayerfully that nobody within your household approaches you with some type of drama or with something that that's going to get you that's going to set you off basically so that's why that that love you, you it's it's a requirement it, it is the ultimate and and once we get through the fact that we we definitely are defected spiritually through our hearts um it, it helps us to just just take a step back and say hey wait a minute even as i went through like an ordeal like i said i was in a repetitive cycle i had to go through something twice yesterday mm -hmm. and um got that do over and just evaluate and, and looking at like as I'm engaging with others how to respond looking at how Jesus responded um, even looking at the times you you see in the word with respect to someone asking Jesus Jesus a question and you see that he doesn't answer. When I was reading a, one of those parts to where he didn't answer, and then I'm just sitting up here and I was thinking about there's times to where certain things where I shouldn't have said certain things, or there's times to where when someone asks you to keep something to yourself or don't say anything to something somebody, you know, with something that they share with you. There are times the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord highlighted to me, there's times to where you won't have to just take stuff down to your grave. You won't have to take the truth down with you, you to, to the grave. And it just may not be known. And there are times to where you're going to be expected to whatever name, you know, this is why the word says, you know, um, we shouldn't look to receive the, the honor of man, but the honor of God. And um, there's times to where you're going to be looked at as this particular person just as jesus did and um you he took the truth down with, with him even though that he he bore the sins of the world on him jews and gentiles because right then and there um and this is where we are we we are in this season of judgment to where the church is being judged the, the leaders of the church at large is being judged and then also you got the leaders of the world being judged um and because you got good and you got evil you got the circumcised and you got the uncircumcised and this is where we are right now and what 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 judges the two of them life life and life more abundantly love is judging them this is what's happening right now love love is judging 
good. Love is judging evil. Love is judging the Jews. Love is judging the Gentiles. Love is judging the circumcised. Love is judging the uncircumcised. Love is judging the law and the letter thereof. And love is judging the spirit. Um, and, or shall I say the soul. And, um, but at the end of the day, you know, what the, the Lord was showing me, um, especially because I wanted to go over John 20 and 21, some parts, not all of it, because I know these videos are lengthy. But when you're receiving the word and when you're receiving food, you got to think of you got to think of these videos just like any meal that you would sit at the table. When you can sit at the table to get some natural food and sit there long enough to want to put shove stuff up in your mouth. Um, the same thing can happen here when you're receiving this, this, this good word of the Lord. And so, um, the spirit, this is where most of the Gentiles were. They, they may not had the letter of the law. It was just like, um, what is, what is his name? Um, Holy Spirit. Peter was on the roof and it was, what is his name? Oh, Kataman Yara Bashon Toro Korora Barro Korora da Canase. Is it Cornelius? Cornelius. He was, Peter was on the roof. I believe it was Cornelius. Uh, hallelujah. Um, and he was, he told him to go kill and eat. But Peter perceived and was just saying, like, it's unclean. God said that which I have cleaned, you know don't say that it is unclean um because you know the people of the world they may not have the letter of the law like the body or the leaders or you know of christ but spiritually they are in tune spiritually and um many of them can perceive and will do the right thing and this is why God sought to give them favor and 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 um, honor them in a sense and, and allow them to even provoke, even in this time, the Jews to, to jealousy. Hallelujah. Because they have the very thing that will strike in and, and, and or, or, or will strike in that will, you know, um, happen or that will like kick in and 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 depend on <laughs> the life source to where the the um the, the the law will tap more into the word and and it is not so because if you're not following the direction of the Lord and if you go on by every word in here, it's all and, and people like to use the word to satisfy whatever they want to satisfy at that time. Not really realizing that if you use it all at once, it's going to contradict. It's just you. you it's got to be a noun word. It's got you got to use what applies now and you have to discern and know what to apply and how to live it. This is why having the spirit of the Lord as your di direct source and contact, he will tell you, you will know what applies now and what's needed now. And, you know, everything else is, is, is you know, you won't be subject to everything else because what God is telling you now takes precedence over everything else. And it just makes sense that this is what applies now. And, and, and. That's pretty much where we are in a sense right now to ensure that we are doing what applies now and, and what we should be, where we should be are, you know, where we should be are, <laughs> where we are and where we should be right now. Um, again, looking at um, John 13 and 14, I didn't really go a lot into really what we should be doing as far as you know like love love is really bending over like in a sense it, it is turning your other cheek and allowing um living life is 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 really turning that other cheek and, and allowing whether it be good 
those that are living by the letter of the law, living by the letter, evil, those that are lawless, you, because that's what's being, that's what's judging everything right now. Because Jesus, uh, because you see it in, in verses, um, what, what, what verses with that? I'll give you scripture, <laughs> give you scripture reference for it. Um, because when Caiaphas, he, he, um, noted that, you know, Jesus was the sacrificial lamb. And then now you, you, you got now Jesus being, he was detained. And now you have in chapter, was it 19? Pilate. Yes. Chapter 19. Look in, look in John 19, where Pilate, you know, the, Jesus is before Pilate and He's again the authority of the world, Gentiles, because of their laws and what the Jews wanted to um, persecute Jesus for. It was just so high up there, like the Jew, you know, Pilate. He was he was like bugging out, like even his senses was going off, even his wife's senses was going off, like. Oh, this ain't good. The, this, the, this is innocent blood right here. They knew it. Spirit, they knew it in here. They knew, especially to the point to where the Jews wasn't trying to hear it. Especially not according to this. They wasn't trying to hear it. It's blasphemous. He ain't God. And especially to the point to where they said, um, you know, right, not the king. This is... um. I'm, I'm jumping here. I'm in verse. Oh, this is still verse nine, chapter 19, verses um 21, where he says, "Write not the king of the Jews." But Pilate knew the truth. He, oh no, this this is the king. Like he may not had the law um, with respect to the letter, but in his spirit, oh he he knew and he kept asking questions. He's like, "Don't you know I have the authority?" And Jesus says in verse 11, chapter 19, I'm still in John, except it were given the from above, um, he said, thou couldst have no power at all against me. Jesus knew all this was going down. He knew I'm going to be in front of this man, Pilate. This is this is about to happen um, because guess what? I'm judging you just as well as I'm judging the, the church. Hallelujah. Um, because you are a man of authority of the world and you should perceive this you have the opportunity to 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 stop this and and because you're sensing something you have an authority and those and he says but look what he says right here still verse 11 chapter 19 of john he says therefore let me read the whole thing jesus verse 11 jesus answered thou couldest have no power at all against me except it were given thee from above therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. Ooh, who was Jesus talking about? Jesus was talking about the, the authority, the Pharisees, Sadducees of the church body of Christ, which wasn't the church body at the time because, because the, the, the love was judging both the children of God and the children of the world based off of their actions when the son of man was raised before everybody hallelujah to see he look at like he applied their sins of he applied the sins of of based on him them judging him in which in ter turn they were being judged and um he had to reconcile and take all of that and submit it subject it unto himself because once he did that, now he says, I am the law. I'm, he, 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 he just pretty much was the law. He is the law. He said, now, under this new covenant, this is what y'all going to, this is what y'all going to go by now. And that's why he had established his chosen, living the chosen life. Hallelujah. To go establish what he set forth and, and, and go out into the world and do what he needed to be to do because at the end of the day the church body of Christ is the governing body of the world we're supposed to set the example to the rest of the world and it's just like big brother again like Jesus follow me 
do this and then every and then it's supposed to be a trickle effect then the rest of everybody is supposed to do this even the the, the laws the way of this world but we have a, a prince of the power of the air of this world that's manipulating and perverting everything and that's that's the guidelines that the world is under even though pilot he he um was perceiving that something is not quite right here something is going down this bogus stuff this foolishness these these laws are just so high up so what the spirit of the lord was was showing me that the the circumcised because of the laws they were so rigid so you know like shooting for perfection they were sinning themselves but they wanted to sit up here and subject everybody else to it but they weren't they they didn't abide by it and it, it, it they couldn't this is why jesus said you know he he who is without sin cast the first stone at her cast cast a stone at her if you without sin you judging you know this woman here take the plank out of your own eye first and so because we're at this time to where the church body it's, it's at the end of the day it's just love right now we're being judged and we're being judged based off of our love um and and because you know besides you know me looking at like let's just say if my device was just to just jeez i ain't gonna even gonna say that um <laughs> because even brother Jalen was just he just lord i'm praying we praying for each other right now um just making sure that we keep everybody in prayer to just just stay strong um you know when you got when you being tested because something is not working properly or when or if somebody is coming before you and and giving you lip and you know it, it does take you off your game it does take you like your flesh goes in i don't want to say fight or flight i i want to i want to go off and say um set it off mode because when something comes and set the flesh off that's the type of mode you literally go in and you don't want to hear nothing um lord i love you but and we just go right into it the spirit of the living god is just saying you love me keep my command and that's as simple as it is like okay lord i love you <laughs> and then this is at this point you do really want to be separated from your flesh because now you you have this this on you here that's really consuming every fiber and sending some type of signal to make you not make you because your flesh can't make you do anything it has such a high influence of peer pressure to get you to like it's just hmm, i'm gonna go there it's like the holy spirit like that's the first thing that came you know how like you're having relations and that urge once that urge is satisfied and and it's released and then you have peace that's how it is in oh well your flesh yeah that's where your flesh can take you and that's that's where how most addictions and it seems like once so long as lust keeps calling for it to for it to be satisfied you truly got to be operating in love one like as your flesh keeps calling for it, it it's it's a lust we are you know men like without the source of love and without the source of the living god spiritually without the, the holy spirit we're not living in a source of love. We're not living by a source of love. We are living by and in a source of lust. And we're only going after what the flesh um, seeks um, and, and, and order, you know, as satisfaction. And a lot of that is not only, you know, that flesh gets a lot of its influence and tendencies because of the perversions of this world. And then also we got things chirping. And, but when we are in that fullness of the Lord, and when we stay in that word and we remember 
you know, first off, especially if you're, you know, like Adam and you're getting, you know, your direct communications from the Lord, you would, you, you, it's beautiful when you can just make sure that you, you're, you're just gazing on him and, and you, uh, you keep the soul self focus on him and in what he says to do. Even this morning, I can say that, um, let me go into it. That's verse 19. I was supposed to go into verse chapters. I think I, yeah. Um, it was verses, what's that? It's verse 19. And um, I think it's definitely 21. Um, as far as, you know, trying to stay on folks, trying to stay on track here. I apologize. Um, I lost my train of thought. Holy Spirit, please, please help me. Make sure that this word is just definitely being sown on good ground. Um, love. Hallelujah. So, oh yeah, I was saying, thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> like how I even easily got off track. The Spirit of the Lord gave me my itinerary for today. And, um... I knew the things that the Lord wanted me to do. And as even the Lord, you know, cause I've, I've gotten to the point to where I've religiously done things. The, I've, I've spent so much time in communion. I was, you know, in a religious spirit and the Lord was weaning me because he doesn't like the religious spirit. So he's weaning me and getting me back into the world to where, you know, I know what I need to do. But I also know that I have a life, life and, and I have a rela relationship with him. So it's not so tick tock on the dot, do this, do that, whatever have you. I was being trained, I was being taught. And, but he doesn't want such a religious spirit. And this is what Pilate also was noting, noting, noticing or noting and what didn't set right on his spirit. And he was saying, I'm just going to wash my hands of it, you know, um, like this, like for, he was like, I see, I see no, no fault in this man for what y'all, y'all trying him by. And he was like, well, you try him and, you know, pushing him off and, but no one necessarily really standing up to really doing what they're supposed to be doing and had the, you know, had they been really seeing and, and, and listening to what they should have been listening to. And this is why the Lord said, you know, love one another and, 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 and like washing, you know, being a servant and washing each other's feet. We should be at each other's feet in a sense to like, li like really listen and, and really see what's going on and discern, especially because if we are all operating according to the, the, you know, the voice of the Lord and especially with respect to what's going on now, we should, we should know, like, we should know, we should be able to pick up and discern like, oh, I see what's going on, keeping it to ourselves because if the enemy don't see what's going on and know what's going on, but we should perceive what's going on, we shouldn't be so quick to judge what, you know, um, and even Pilate, you know, he knew for the reasons that they had him on trial that it wasn't right. But if he knew the law, he would understand the reason why Jesus was on the trial. Like if he knew the word per se, if he knew like, okay, this is, this is the savior of the world and this, that, and the other. Had he known like some of them, some of the Samaritans, some of the mulattoes, some of the Gentiles, you know, the mixture, some of them knew that, um, especially because there were so many mixed breed from, again, so many times of like, um, not pleasing the Lord and, and, and them getting off and then having all these different idols, you know, um, Israel, it's been plenty of times to where, um, let's, the people just been, they were scattered throughout the land. And because they become scattered, now you you're mixing in with this and that. And you, you know, you got the sons of man mixing with the the um, the daughters of of 
the Lord and you know the the daughters of the world mixing with the sons of man of God and so of course we got mixed breed we, we got so much going on right now there's no more purity in in you know God's make of Adam and um, I pray that I know I'm I'm the listen it's up here and when God gives you this stuff it's, it's just crazily amazing and again it depends on how this this word is rooted but you know we need to perceive but I just wanted to say how I got off track and how the love of God that's not displayed not only gets you off track when you go off track but now you, you you get discombobulated now your spirit your countenance hallelujah thank you like Cain gets off whack and 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 now is now everybody's going to suffer because you 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 you're not in order and you're not in law and order and you you got this chaotic spirit going on because you in 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 a cycle of different mess and and foolishness that you shouldn't be in and these things happen to delay you especially if there's an assignment for you to meet somebody a divine connection or if the lord is just trying to keep you on track and and so this is what loving one another means because if i love the lord thy god with all my heart and soul Loving him first is taking care of the things that I need to do for him because I never know what he needs for me to do for somebody else. And, you know, and because of that, somebody would miss a blessing or a divine connection or whatever it is. Somebody it might be somebody out there knowing that they have to wait for a person, you know, that's going to stand next to them on the corner. That's going to get them five hours because they need to get on the bus or, or, or whatever the case may be. And so, if we love the Lord our God, we'll be obedient to be at that bus stop or whatever have you. Because now we're displaying that we love somebody else as we love ourselves. Because I definitely would want the person that's supposed to meet me at the bus stop with five dollars so I can get where I got to go. And and this this is what it means. Put yourself in that other person's shoes, and 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 knowing how you would want to be treated and and treat them. And so you never know what another person has going on. God, thank thank you, Lord hallelujah because god is really taking over this right now because the thing is is that um what the holy spirit is saying here for all those those other people that the enemy is using you know it's been times to where particular relatives that they're, they're not understanding these cycles that we're going through they're not understanding like why am i keep because i've heard this from particular yeah in in-house warfare why we keep going through this like they, they're not perceiving really that there's a cycle to where I know that it's straight up a cycle. And um, even like, it's, it's like certain things is so cyclical. The enemy will learn you and, and have a pattern in a minute. And, and you you won't even realize that you're in, in, in it. And um, because we know better their day is going to go off course we now have to like how Moses did take what they got going on and put it on our shoulders because we should know better we have to understand and so if I know that somebody is going through something and I, I have that understanding now put myself in their shoes and, and see what I can do to provide love love and help them to make it better because again it's not them that's after you it's the enemy that's using you to be after you you now have to go in and see what you can do to make it better so that they can be from you know from under the enemy's attack and grasp whatever snare that the enemy has them in you now have to go in because otherwise it's, it's just going to be a trickle effect um because the, the it's in which which word is it in like peter like you know making sure that we forgive one another or whatever he's because the lord says lest um the enemy has you and that person so we we have to be mindful um that especially if we 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 have a little bit more 
knowledge and wisdom with respect to the word and, and especially if we study to show ourselves approved and stay in it um, the way that we should, um, we'll know how to apply that word to where we can, you know, be, we'll definitely be aware of, of Satan's devices and, and the tactics that he's using. Um, and it's unfortunate that having so many things God is he if he could just get our attention and just keep it there it's just like doing like this and to where like you're not focused on anything else around you to the point to where he once he got you there there's no turning back and then now you can assist others you you have your mask on and you literally can help others to put their mask on too and so when it comes to the fact that when somebody's not having a good day or having a bad day and how the enemy is using something cyclical or just like you're just painted as the enemy because the enemy that's within them that's that's coming against you technically is the enemy knowing what that is and applying some love on it and um you you definitely gonna throw that that evil spirit you're gonna throw that devil off guard and um they're not going to be able to have one up on you you're gonna have one up on it and and so um any anything that we do to get off course um one of you know there was a i had a lineup of things but i sat up here and i i got off of alignment a little bit because I wanted to go do a load of laundry um it's not funny I'm just laughing because I'm just I mean I'm not laughing but well I'm just gonna call it what it is I chuckled because it's it's just so stupid how I just easily just got to the point to where I knew what I needed to do why did I sit up here and go throw this into the mix and um, even once I finished making this video, definitely now I'm going and, and, and finishing out the first, the rest of my, the commandment of the Lord, because I do have to go meet somebody and I do have to go and assist that individual. And yeah, I cannot allow for, uh, do the laundry later on. You can do laundry at night. <laughs> you don't have to, you know, um, if you give yourself to the Lord, it's no longer your day, it's his day. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, don't think it above of that. You know, well, Eve, Paul said it. You know, you're servant of the Lord. You, you know, you you you're a slave to Him, and you know, it's definitely true love for sure. And I I do. There are times to where I see that I could just do whatever, and then I just be sitting up there. It'd be sometimes to where I don't even be knowing what to do. I truly don't be knowing what to do sometimes. It's like when I'm at a rest or when the Lord is just telling me to like just just chill out. I'm like, so like what what we doing, Lord? Like, you know, like I don't be wanting them to separate. It's just it's just gotten crazy to the point to where like God is re reminding me we're we're in a relationship. It is we're not in a religion you, you know i want you to rest i want you to you know do particular things but i, I truly want y'all to be reminded that you know stick to be on your be in in the life of your first love and that's the lord anything else you know from the lord on down to like the the, the, the two greatest commandments of loving the lord thy god with all our heart he just wants us to keep his commandment if we keep the command of loving him, everything else is just easy. Because when you love him, you're focused on what's of him. And um, you're, fo you're focused on to being in the ways of him and his law. And even if you should, you know, go beyond one of the laws of, of you not only have his, but even everything of what this world made. Three times, I believe this was said a couple of times to where Brother Kevin Zadar said, you know, he lives in his complex and he's like, um, 
in the complex, the speed limit is like 15. I'm just making a number up or whatever. If it is 15, he said, I set it on cruise control. I just go under the speed limit. I'll be within the speed limit. I'm not breaking any laws. I don't need no, he, he was talking about how there's a lot of police officers that live in his complex. He don't need nobody coming after him. And I'm like, wait a minute, That's, this is telling me something. So now I'm making sure as I'm driving here out in the world, in the, you know, in the world, whatever have you, making sure I'm buying by the world's laws because the world does say that to ensure that we are keeping within the laws of the world. I'm so used to just doing what the world does and going above the limit. That is a speed limit. That's a law. And so if I'm going above that limit, I'm breaking the law. And so if I'm breaking the law of the world, guess what? Okay, and because, you know, the body of Christ is set at an, at an authority that's supposed to judge the world, how am I above the law? And, and, and it's not so. And so guess what? The accuser of the brethren is going to do. He's going to go to the courts of heaven and say, God, you see that? You know, she's breaking the law, the laws that I've set in this world to be, you know, to sit, you know, this is the speed limit and look at what she's doing. If I don't repent and, and get myself right back up, all I have to do is just slow down. Oh, Lord, I re repent. I didn't mean to like be above the speed limit, you know, my lead foot or just whatever. I'm just so used to just going, you know, the Lord, he's forgiven. He know that. That's why it shouldn't be so many laws. I mean, that's why we should. This is why we should. Yeah, it shouldn't be so many laws. And and it, it wasn't. It, Adam and Eve, the Lord just says. You know, stay away from knowledge of good and evil. And then guess where we are? The knowledge of good and evil is being judged right before our very eyes in this day. And love is the, 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 the primary factor that's judging good and evil right here, right now in this time. We have to understand that the leaders of the church are subject to the judgment. And love is, is, is the primary thing of which we're... Um, being judged by and which it, the weight is going to be on with respect to where we are in our lives and then also the leaders of the world is subject to the same judgment because um, if they're not if they don't know the laws the word of God um, biblically, biblically you at least got that sense spiritually just like Cornelius did and you know there was many who gentiles who definitely stayed in tune spiritually in a sense and just did the right thing and that's why they they god they just had favor even the ones that worship the lord even the one their faith stood out more than the the, the, the people of god the children of god and it's just it's it's just crazy and this is why he says he's going to reconcile all in all jews and gentiles circumcised uncircumcised you know good and evil um the the wheat and the tares every all in all is going to be reconciled back unto the lord i want y'all to stay focused you know chapter 21 speaks of you know the Lord presenting himself to the children of God and and making sure that you know he's seen so he's believed that he is the resurrection and the life and now he's told his disciples he said you know just as my father has sent me out he blew the Holy Spirit on them and he said now you go out just as you know as my father sent me I'm sending you He's chosen us. He's preparing us to be ready, especially once that judgment is over. Because once Jesus died, judgment was over. He was on the earth to go out and, and he sent his disciples. We are at that point to where the harvest will be plenty, but the laborers are few. His chosen. We're at the brink of life where that, that judgment is to where resurrection occurring and he's his spirit is poured out on whom he's chosen for all to do what he's told them to do the thing is, is that we cannot be like peter 
That's why he said, lovest thou me? Peter, lovest thou me? Peter, he said, you know I love you. Peter wasn't focused on what Peter should have been doing. Peter was focused on what John was. You see him at the end of chapter 21. He was so full, he was focused on what John was. Well, what is he going to do? Jesus like, well, if you must know, he going to tarry until I come. He going to wait until I come. But for you, I, I told the, what I wrote for you, as it is written, this is why I need you to love yourself. Love me first. If you love me, you'll love the story that I wrote for you. If you love me, you'll love me that I love you so much that this is the provision. This is what I made for you. This is what I have for you, Peter. This is what I want for you to have. And this is what I want for you. I loved you. So I thought of you so much that this is, this, this is the story that you have right here. Right here. This is the story that you have. Love me because I first loved you. This is what I wrote of you. And and you should love this because you're here, you're living. You you have life, you have a story. And 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 um it, it's a great one because this this is you know, you're going to be feeding my sheep. My my church is going to be built on you. It's it's the found you're the very foundation the the very uh drive and and will of you you, you know you you taking your stance before man for me so long as it's not perverted and and you want to sit up here and steal the glory of the lord by wanting to die with him you know so long as you stick to the script peter you know because i believe at that point he went back to fishing and jesus had to tell him hey listen you, you you're not in alignment love with love my love feed my people love my people stick to what you're supposed to be doing don't worry about what any other disciple is doing if if, if they should fall love them um wash their feet pick them up help them help them get back into alignment and said you know uh, allow the lord to do his job with respect to him and and whom he needs to get in alignment with because anytime i know i'll i'll be done sat up here and done judge myself to us yes yeah, certain things well yeah <laughs> um let's see if we talking about that i was feeling some kind of way with the whole exercise thing what i was saying in the beginning so where yeah i was judging myself so much i didn't even want to come forward and just say yes me i did say yes me but i just definitely just held up on it because it was just like I just just didn't I, I'm hearing guilt and shame wow yeah you just don't want to go before the Lord and just be like you're just holding your head down and just like you know I ain't want to disappoint him he's already you know he's not going to be disappointed because he just he just wants you to do what you need to do he's not going to continue to keep holding one the thing that I've learned is like like the sooner God can move on the sooner you move on and you can move on the sooner you, you allow God to, to move on like yeah the, the sooner you move on the sooner God will move on and you can be on with your life so long as you don't sit up there and hold on to anything and, and which stuff that just doesn't make any sense to sit up here and keep holding on to um there don't get me wrong there are definitely some traumas and things like that and I've definitely dealt with dealt with traumas and things like that and the things that the Lord had to help me with um things that I didn't hold on to but they've strengthened me to the point to where they God is definitely using that to be to lead um but it's been perverted so he has to now operate that same type of authority the sternness that that other leader um like Paul, Jesus, you know, I heard Jesus first, should say Jesus. Um, but the reason why I didn't want to say Jesus first, because as soon as, just, just like when Jesus was associating himself with God, you get persecuted for it. But God needs me to stand bold and be bold before man, because he just said, you be bold, you stand before me before man, and I'll stand before my Father in heaven for you. So definitely not going to not love my story. And because I have a story to love, as he has written, you know, I not only love the Lord thy God, but I love others because now I don't want them to fall because I'm sitting up there and holding them up. You know, I could be holding somebody up from 
you know, there's so many people that have stories and testimonies out here that definitely can help somebody else. So who are we to sit up here and hold that up and to keep that information and that knowledge and the possibility of somebody being able to heal because of our own selfishness? And um, especially if it's something that we can get past and, you know, come past, then look at the love that we have, you know, first of all, for our father, because we want to now be tethered to him and not those things. But then look at what we have on for others, how it can help somebody, but ourselves, because now we can move on. We can live the life that he wrote for us and we can live in that happiness and now we'll get we'll reap the true benefits of that that love and peter he he wasn't doing that um he was holding up feeding god's sheep because he was so you know he was so focused because again yeah jesus had to say love is thou me love is thou me he needed for him to love him because if you love me you would you know you would keep my commandments my command is to do the will of your father focus on the story that i wrote for you let everybody else focus on their parts and let me deal with those parts when they should rise of somebody else you know i just the, the help i need for you to do when somebody does fall is to wash wash their feet to love them and and to help them get back up me and that person will deal with what i in unless they you the Lord specifically gives you something and you're walking in obedience to give that word or give that confirmation and doing it in love and not pointing a finger like you got to understand God's ways on how he does approach people he the way you see people calling people out and doing all this other stuff that's not God's way it is simply not his way once you understand how God does something and how you should be approaching somebody then you know it's a word to not only to give but then to receive but if it's not in the ways of the lord yeah <laughs> you, you definitely have to be mindful i know i've definitely said so much in so much excitement because i am an excitable person that that that's what gets me um in trouble a lot um i have to truly learn how to decrease my flesh's excitement when i encounter my divine connections and that's what's been getting in the way of me loving the Lord because my excitability will suppress the spirit of the Lord in my own life and is keeping it from others and um, it can be intimidating and overwhelming for those and um, it's been times to where certain of my assignments are not they don't want to hear what the spirit of the Lord will have to say through me and you, you can see it through my videos. It, it just gets so, like, you so on fire and so, like, zealous. It's almost, it's like being a newborn. You you just have, like, this life and you're just like, whoa, I got to tell the world. But the world is, they, 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 they can't comprehend what the light has, is experiencing. They just simply can't. And, and because we have to see ourselves at that point. I remember when... Um, others were literally delivering the word to me and I don't know whatever but I also realized too that the Lord he always shows me Hannah specifically held my life for him for his use for a, a reason in time and he did not want me to be subject to church or its lifestyle because he 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 was teaching me at in these end days and um he kept me separate and apart from that that world or that life in general because he didn't want me to be compromised and he didn't want any of anything i was a clean slate i was straight up cold and this is what the lord he said i would be i'd rather you hot or cold because if you was lukewarm i'll spew you out because i i'm sitting up here pleading like how come i didn't grow up and like that whining thing again and he was he was like the lord is your shepherd i was like oh i knew that i knew psalm 23. oh that's deep that like that's dope dad like oh sweat like wow yeah that's right you are my shepherd like i didn't really need anything and then plus what could somebody else teach me when you got the true and living god sitting up here like 
mentoring you himself. What could be better than man? And I get a lot of people wanting me to join churches, didn't any of them? Like, you want me to feed in, you want me to trade in what you're doing from what he's already like assigned me to do or, or has written for me to do to be like in one on one with him? Oh, no, 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 no. Like, the, what church are you going to? go to oh I, I just point straight up the church of the true and the living God <laughs> the truth um so yeah I, I had a Hannah story to the point to where he specifically wanted her to have Samuel at a at a Kairos moment in time for his purpose um I did not have church lifestyle or just whatever have you because I was in God's Kairos timing and moment and you know i've definitely gotten um you know condemned for it um when going to different you know god got he helped me to see right there i was seeing how to judge basically and because of what he taught me and um but anyway we have to focus on what the story that God has written for us we also have to focus on ensuring love is being applied to the to the utmost best of our ability put our we have to put ourselves in the shoes of the other person that's definitely coming coming at us um, it's just like like let's just say somebody has a loaded gun and they got it pointed at you are you going to be a loose oh hallelujah holy spirit that's a good one <laughs> you definitely if somebody got a loaded gun at you you gonna go popping off at the mouth are you gonna go popping off up at the mouth you gonna be like a deer caught in headlights that's basically almost in this well i don't think the lord wants you to be like a deer caught in headlights but you like the word says don't be so quick to speak but you know at least be quick to just just be chill and listen and you know you got to think of those people as coming to you like a loaded gun and 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 now you gotta go up here and just say all right holy spirit i know you with me i know you seeing all of this how you going dismantle this how how feed me show me how we're handling this and that's basically how, you know, it's like now you got to disarm them. How are you going to do that? And, and then applying that love and, and just, you know, because now only one person is irate. It ain't the both of y'all. It's only one. And so um, I didn't really, I, I went into John 19 and 20 and 21. <laughs> um, I didn't go as much as I should have, especially with reading what I wanted to read, but I did in a sense, when, especially when he said, feed my sheep. Um, and um, just making sure you understood like where we are. Um, the judgment upon is upon the face of this world. Many have been already been saying it, but you know, we don't understand how judgment is being applied how judgment you know like what what basis it's it's definitely heavenly laws it's not the laws of this world um again um jesus was right there smack in the middle of both of whom he was judging um the leader of of the church body of um of god and then it was the leaders at the time which was the jews um, the, the the church leaders, of the, you know, the leaders, and um, the Pharisees, Sadducees, they they were at the time being judged, and then you also had Pilate and those leaders, you know, of particular kingdoms or just whatever have you of the world. They were being judged based off of you know, cause again, their sensory spiritually, you know, having that um, that gifting or having that knowing there was still a part of the Lord that you know you can't get beyond of, of, as far as like not knowing because God based off of his creation and how he made you oh he gonna he's gonna say well like there's gonna be no way you can get out of what the spirit of the living God will will present before you especially on your day of judgment your personal day of judgment because 
if this is the manual and and because he know how he intricately intricately created each and every individual he knows how everybody is made up he know what they're made up of he knows how he's known to design everything he's going to know what kick in what didn't kick in just whatever have you and and he's going to know how to apply the law accordingly and you know what we need to see is love is what we are is is the basis on what you know how judgment is being applied and and what we lack with respect to it thereof hallelujah so i just pray that you know you you don't forget your first love and um which is knowing that your love comes from your help and and, and it's god and 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 applying the the order of the law of his love you know loving him first loving others as yourself and you know we we at the end of the day we got to come into that that love of ourselves we come into the love of god loving him is obeying him like just like wow lord knowing that this is your story and just saying this is what you thought of me and then just loving it like if if the lord wrote for you to be a leader be a leader if the lord wrote for you to be a baker be a baker if the lord wrote for you to make wine or tend to animals and just whatever he wrote for you love it and i'm pretty sure because many of us have so many different things um that the lord has like hardcore wired into them that they you know can um bear witness or attest to that there's something that they like cannot live with without a doubt was like in them but the world has perverted it so much or people will sit up here and dummy down what what comes from so far up and beyond to where you don't think that it's something that you're supposed to do because we allow the world to now rewrite that story in our minds when it's already hardwired into us and so i just pray that you you know tap into god loving him first and loving yourself love others as you love yourself and so if you know you will want whatever you know you will want you know to transpire or, or take place with yourself you would know you know you will want the same you know for others and if you see that somebody is lacking that you just like you know i wouldn't want that for myself so basically knowing you know and if, if somebody is coming at you like a loaded gun you you figure out like all right like if i was coming at this if i was that if i was in that person's shoes coming at somebody as a loaded gun i would want somebody to ask me like or some sometimes it's be times to where i just be wanting a hug you know sometimes some people just be needing a hug or you, you just never know like all right hold up like what's going on like like let's talk about this sometimes some people may not be like throw them off you want to go get some ice cream i mean whatever it is to diffuse the situation this is why the meek will inherit the earth because the meek we we sit back just like that god he's long suffering he like people think like god he ain't going to do no we we've just been given like this period of grace and this the long suffering and, and god is just so meek people just think that meek means weak no it does not mean that it, it just means and then plus please if God can just get rid of us at the blink of an eye, don't you want to? Don't you you want to make sure that you know He ain't gonna be like a loaded gun and come up after you and get rid of you. And so you, it's been times that's that's been some of the cases in the Bible. And so, but because He's not like that, you know, like the meek will inherit the earth because they'll be the ones that'll sit up here and allow somebody to just, you know, slap the cheek and then then slap the other one and then you know it's all right man you know sometimes people you know they you know they go through things in life and we just got to be there to understand and just help them out or whatever have you and that's all it takes sometimes but this is where we are i just wanted to set the record straight and, and just pray that people will receive this word um with knowing where we are right now um, we are definitely in at the, the end of the book of John um, and um, judgment is has definitely come um, for 
you know, the world in, in us individually, in our personal lives, um, the church body of Christ at large, the world, and um, it's being weighed. Like, it's, 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 it's you got love, it's, it's on a scale. And love is the application that is is going to be the basis of how, yeah, how we receive this, the sentence or whatever have you. We know what we need to correct at this point. Um, and so if the body of Christ doesn't have it themselves, how are we going to show Christ in, 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 in us? And prove to others. We have to give them someone to see. And that someone needs to be Christ at the end of the day. And if it's definitely um, submitting to the point to where we're not getting in a responding um, battle and confrontation with somebody. Then just like, just whatever it takes, use wisdom and allow the Lord to help you apply you know his ways of love it's not a weakness it's it's not you know we, we just have to identify like what's worth it at that point so um i pray that this video blesses you it definitely is like um i i, I don't get on here unless i'm supposed to obviously this is something that's needed and this is where we are and i, I clearly see this easily with you know everything that the Spirit of the Lord has downloaded and, and, and has said. And um, let's love one another. Let's help one another. Let's wash each other's feet. And, and, and make sure that we don't submit to the flesh on, you know, being a loose cannon. And, um, you know, coming, you know, just being a loaded gun like everybody else is. This is why the meek will survive. Um, and this is, and if we were, and that's, and that's one of the things, thank you, Holy Spirit. We have to know that we're get given up our lives. We have to live John 15. We have to lay our lives down for our friends. If we know already where we're going and if it takes for us to sacrifice ourselves so somebody else can like see what was really done for them, just like Jesus did, then why are you trying to still sit up here and save your life? It's just like he said, those who will lose their lives for my sake, you know, will save it. And and so, yeah, sacrifice yourself um, and and know that, you know, you'll lay your life down for your friend. And that's basically what it is. Somebody coming at you with a loaded gun, surrender. Hallelujah. On that note, I'm going to end it in Jesus name. Amen.